So differentiating this one here, we have a lot of things going on. We have a product rule. So sine and log, we've got in, the sine is embedded inside a squared function. And we also have the quotient rule here. So we have to be careful when we're differentiating this. So I'm going to start with differentiating the numerator. And to differentiate the numerator, I need to first differentiate the outside function. Let me just write this down here. Y prime is equal to differentiating the outside function. I'm going to differentiate sine x, sorry, the squared. But because it is embedded, the sine is embedded, I have to apply chain rule to multiply by cos x. Here I still have a product, so I have to then multiply by the log x. So this is just the first part of the product rule. The second part of this product rule, and I'm going to put this in square brackets here. The second part of the product rule is going to be, I'm going to leave the first term undifferentiated, and then I'm going to differentiate the second term 1 over x. So that completes the product rule part of this derivative. However, because it's a quotient rule, that it only represents the first part of the quotient rule. So then I have to multiply by e to the x. Then I need to do the second part of the quotient rule, which involves just leaving the first part of the, the numerator here, leaving that untouched. Okay, so that represents the first part, the undifferentiated numerator. And then I need to apply the derivative to the denominator. Well, the nice thing about it is it just gives me e to the x. And then when I different, I need to make sure I square the denominator. But because there's common factors here, I can cancel some of these out. So I know that the e to the x's cancels out with one of the e to the x's here. So writing a simplified version of this, okay, we want to clean this up as much as we can. We have the derivative now, so we want to clean this up as much as we can. I think we should probably put that x in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 1 over x. Okay, so in the denominator, we end up with x and 1 over 1 e to the x. Okay, so that then should cancel out this 1 over x here, but we have to make sure that we uh, include that 1 over x in the different parts. So this is going to be 2 sine x cos x log x, and they're also going to be an extra factor of x here, plus sine squared x minus, and this becomes sine x squared and log x. Okay, oh sorry, there's an extra x in here as well, so times by x. Okay, so make sure that you can keep track of all those factors. Now, I didn't have to put that 1 over x in the denominator, but it seemed to me, instead of having an embedded fraction like this, just multiply the top and bottom by the x, then we, we get rid of the 1 over x term here, so then we no longer have a 1 over x term here. Okay, so one last thing we should, probably should do is we probably should factor out the sine x, because that represents a factor if we're solving for zeros that factor is very useful to have so we're going to have y prime is equal to sine x this is leaves me with 2 cos x log x times x plus a sine x minus a sine x log x and an x factor here. Okay, so that gives me that factor of sine x if I need to solve this and then divide by x e to the x and really I can't simplify that much more. Okay, the factoring of that extra sine x is good to do but really it's I don't know how necessary it is. Definitely should cancel out those e to the x's at some point though.